Thursday greetings and welcome to Prime Time News. I'm Salima Shimwefileni. Leading tonight's bulletin, we begin with electoral matters. The Electoral Commission of Namibia ECN Chairperson Notemba Shipwea has proposed that government ought to review various electoral acts that need to be in tandem with the country's constitution in order to function optimally. Shipwea made those remarks today when the ECN commissioners met with President Dr. Hage Ingob at State House to discuss the commissioner's work during their tenure, which ends this month. She said when the constitutional amendment was passed, the Electoral Act was not in line with the Constitution and it caused contradictions and confusion. Therefore, the Commission is seeking government support to enable the Electoral Act to be implemented in line with the Constitution. The chairperson said there are other legislation which are not in line with the constitutional amendment. That is the Public Service Act, which at the moment provides that the Electoral Commission of Namibia is an agency of government. She added that there was a legal opinion from the Attorney General that supported the constitutional amendment, which shows that it can be done in terms of the legal framework. Shipwea explained that the Commission is currently reviewing a number of acts that need to be amended to ensure that the Commission moves away from being a government agency and work independently for the sake of transparency and avoid interference from the executive. On his part, Gengob said in a democratic country like Namibia, government will never interfere in the work of ECN, and he advocated for ECN's independence when he was Prime Minister. The head of state noted, when I was Prime Minister, ECN was under the office of the Prime Minister, and I was the one pushing for it to be out of the office and operate independently. President Dr. Hage Gengob has called on regional governors to refrain from infighting at regional councils. The head of state stressed that governors should instead work together in order to achieve nation building and service delivery. Addressing all governors at State House on Wednesday, President Hage Gengob said they should work towards elevating their duties for nation building and not to fight within the councils. Gengob added that when there is harmony between the chairperson and the governor, there is no problem, but when they are conflicting and there is fighting, there will be problems. The head of state also noted that during the state of the region address, governors should address the nation and not the council. Therefore, the process should be done in a manner that benefits the public by delivering the Sora in the official language, which is English. Gengob went on to say that Namibia is a unitary state which was divided. Therefore, government is working towards uniting its people and governors should be aware of this and carry out the duty of central government in unison. Highlighting common challenges faced by regional councils, Commerce Governor Laura McLeod Kachira on behalf of her counterparts indicated that lack of housing, water, road infrastructure, lack of vehicles and staff establishments as well as lack of funds as main among others. The affirmative repositioning AR movement has expressed its disappointment in what it termed government's bureaucracy hampering the finalization of the rent control bill which intends to regulate rent prices in Namibia. If enacted into law, the bill will allow for the implementation of the Rent Control Board measures which was established in accordance with Section 2 and Section 3 of the Rent Control Ordinance of 1997 in November 2018 by the then Minister of Trade and Industrialization. In an interview with NAMPA on Wednesday, AR spokesperson Simon Amunime said the movement has been writing letters to the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development on the process and implementation of the bill before Parliament, which has however proven futile. Meanwhile, the Harambe Prosperity Plan Quarter 1 report handed to President Hage Gengob on 3rd August 2021 indicates that the rent control bill should be submitted before Parliament for debate and promulgation by December 2021 to guarantee the implementation of the rent control board measures. Speaking to NAMPA on Tuesday, Minister of Urban and Rural Development Erastes Utoni said the bill is currently with the Attorney General's Office for scrutiny and finalization before it is tabled in Parliament. Utoni expressed that he does not know when exactly the bill will be tabled in Parliament, but the AG's office is busy finalizing it and only then can he table the bill. On this note, Amunime indicated that the bill has been standing in motion for too long, noting that three years is a long time. The board was established after AR leader Job Amupanda dragged the government to court over its failure to implement the regulations of the Rents Ordinance 13 of 1977 as amended. Moving on to health matters, Minister of Health and Social Services Dr. Kalumbi Shangula said the ministry will intensify its efforts to convince all healthcare workers to get vaccinated. More on this story by Erasmus Shaliahwe. 
In an interview with NAMPA on Wednesday, Health and Social Services Minister Dr. Kalumbi Shangula said 11,701 healthcare workers have been vaccinated so far, representing 21.7% of those vaccinated since the vaccination campaign started. The ministry has set a target of vaccinating 53,851 healthcare workers by the end of the year. He said the ministry will not force anyone to get vaccinated, but it is also contemplating mandatory vaccination for healthcare workers. Shangula added that they are showing willingness to get vaccinated. In fact, they were the first one to get vaccinated when the campaign started. He said the only way to protect the Mobians from the pandemic is through vaccination and the government with its partners has made great progress in procuring vaccines. Therefore, there is a need for support from everyone, especially political parties, to reduce vaccine hesitancy and increase the uptake of the vaccine by convincing their supporters to take the vaccine. Misinformation and disinformation on social media and other platforms, he noted, have also played a role in hesitancy, while some infected people resort to home remedies and only sought medical treatment when it was too late. Josephine Simeon, Nampa News. Stand by for your top roundup. Athletics is action. And away we go. It's a terrific throw. She's strong enough. And now Kerwa goes. Oh, hang on a minute. This looks like a world record has taken the Paralympic gold in Rio. What a move. Roger is doing a terrific job in the bronze medal. She's broken the world record again. He's got the gold medal. He's a Paralympic champion again. Moving on to business and economics. The local production of electricity in July this year declined by 24.8% compared to the preceding month with independent private producers accounting for 54.4% of electricity production. A report by the Namobia Statistics Agency on Tuesday showed that local production stood at 48,192 megawatts per hour compared to 64,155 megawatts per hour produced in June 2021. Namobia imported 297,297 megawatts in July 2021, with South Africa supplying 50.9% of the electricity imported followed by Zambia with 27.3% and Zimbabwe with 12.4%. 
The report said in July, 297,535 megawatts per hours of electricity were sold in the domestic economy compared to 284,881 megawatts per hours sold in June 2021. Additionally, 8,978 megawatts per hours were exported in July compared to exports of 9,015 megawatts per hours recorded during the preceding months. Angola accounted for 53.7% of electricity exports, followed by Botswana with 36.6% and South Africa with 6.6%. The annual decline in the index is attributed to a reduction in own generation of electricity, whereas imports of electricity recorded an increase. Own generation of electricity fell by 24.9% on a monthly basis and 69.2% on a yearly basis, and the reduction over the year was mainly due to the reduced generation from the Rakana power station that went down by 85.7%, said the report. A report by the Namibia Statistics Agency has shown that the monthly import of alcoholic beverages in July this year saw a reduction by 15%, while non-alcoholic beverages registered a decline of 72.2%. The report seen by NAMPA on Tuesday say the country imported close to 23,000 hectoliters of non-alcoholic beverages in July 2021, compared to nearly 82,000 hectoliters in June 2021. South Africa was the main source of imports, accounting for 81.3%, followed by Botswana at 13.7%, and Germany with 3.7%. On the demand side, 39,184 hectoliters of alcoholic beverages were imported in June 2021, compared to 46,100 hectoliters in June 2021. And the main supplier of the alcoholic beverages in July 2021 was South Africa, accounting for 97.6% of the import, said the report. Namibia during the month of July exported 458 hectoliters of non-alcoholic beverages, compared to just over 1,100 hectoliters that were exported in June. About 64.4% of the beverages were exported to Mauritius, followed by Zambia at 26.1%, while 4.1% was exported to the Democratic Republic of Congo. For the month of July, Namibia exported close to 10,000 hectoliters of alcoholic beverages compared to 45,101 hectoliters in June. South Africa received 69.2% of the alcoholic beverages exported, followed by Botswana at 9.8% and Zambia at 8.8%. The Alcoholic Beverage Index registered a monthly decline of 27.2% in July 2021, compared to an increase of 7.7% recorded for the preceding month, while a reduction of 17.9% was recorded year on year. We will be back shortly after the break. Getting Go TV was the best decision James has ever made. See, James has always watched football wherever he can. Sometimes it got awkward. It was never really comfortable. And finding a good place to watch became more and more difficult, not to mention costly. 
Traveling for his games took its toll on James until he discovered something big. Now that James has Go TV, he can finally enjoy the perks of Home Ground Advantage. Good for you, James. Get Home Ground Advantage with Go TV. With superstar players competing in the world's biggest leagues and cup competitions, you'll be spoiled for football choice. So get and stay connected to Go TV for the best football season yet. Go TV. Love it. It's time for the weather forecast, followed by the sports update with Joy Gosses. Good evening and welcome to Sport Planet with me, Joy Gosses. We commence with the Paralympic Games. Namibia added another medal to its vault when T13 sprinter Johannes Nambala won Namibia's second medal at the ongoing 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games in Japan earlier this morning. Hezron Gapanga, who is on the ground in Japan, filed this report. Nambala, who qualified for the final of the T13 400m after finishing second in his heat on Wednesday night, finished third in the final of the 400m and collected a bronze medal for Team Namibia, which is their second at the competition. Namibia's first medal at the championships came on Sunday when Ananias Shikongo won a silver medal in the men's T11 400m. To claim the bronze this morning, Nambala finished behind 2016 Paralympic Games defending champion Mohamed Amgun of Morocco, who ran a seasonal base time of 47.70 seconds, but finished second while Nambala Run a seasonal best of 48.76 seconds. Staying with the Paralympic Games, T11 sprinter Ananya Shikongo and his guide Evan Shiwil were disqualified in the 100 meter race after the court binding the athlete and his guide slipped off during the race. Shikongo's goal fix running tether, which enables a visually impaired person to run safely alongside a sighted running guide, slipped off his hand just a meter before crossing the finishing line, leading to the officials disqualifying him. Rule 7.9.3 of World Parathletics states that a guide must not release their athlete before the finish line. In an interview with Nampa after the race, Chiwiyu said that Tether slipped off Shikongo's fingers, and he tried by all means to prevent it, but it was too late. Shikongo and Chiwiyu ran a personal beast of 10.98 seconds, which was supposed to be a new African record, but due to their disqualification, that record does not stand. Greece sprinter Athanasios Khafelas and his guide Sotirios Karakhanis won the race with a new world record of 10.82 seconds, replacing the 10.88 seconds they set on Wednesday in round one of the T1100 meter heats. Timothy Adolf of France and his guide Bruno Napri took second place with a personal best of 10.90 seconds, while China's Dong Dong Di and his guide Zhang Gang Liang were promoted to third place. Your sports roundup is up next.
welcome wherever you are on Planet Football. You can go anywhere in the world, but nobody feels football like we do. And they sing, they dare to sing. It's a rhythm. Oh, one, two. One, one, two. Football. La football. Soccer. One, two. That moves us. Salah to settle it. There's no feeling like that feeling. It's so nice. It's so nice. Nothing compares to DSTV's unbeatable football offering. So stay connected to watch the best football on the planet. With that, we have come to the end of tonight's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Primetime News. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, like, share and click on the notifications bell to stay updated on the latest happenings locally and globally. Also, add your comments in the comment section. From myself and the entire production crew, keep well and good night.